Good morning, everybody. This is Thursday, April 30th. Um, welcome back. So a quick reminder, I gave you an assignment yesterday um, coming from yesterday's video. Um, it's on the discussion board and it's due today at four o'clock. Um, basically, you're answering only one question. You do have to watch the Bishop Barron video under links before you can answer that question. Um, and you're answering a question based on your birthday. So choose the question that has, uh, you know, the, the birth month that you were born in and then answer that question by four o'clock today. Um, today, all we're going to do is take a couple notes on the parable of the wedding feast that we talked about yesterday and that hopefully you've already watched the video on. So I'm going to scroll over to my notes in just a second. The picture I chose as the background for the beginning of this video is just a picture from a screen grab from uh, one of the movies made about Jesus. I think it's so it might be Jesus of Nazareth. I can't remember exactly, but um, this is Jesus teaching in parables to the people, uh, which is exactly what we're talking about these days. It's the way that Jesus teaches in parables. Um, you can see everyone listening. And so Jesus uses these stories, as we know, um, in order to teach um, a deeper message to the people that they can understand or they can apply to their lives. So we're going to talk about one of these very strange parables, the parable of the wedding feast. And I'm going to go ahead and go over to my notes. Hopefully this time you'll be able to come with me. I think so. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and look at this parable. So Bishop Barron does an awesome job at explaining what's going on. So in Matthew 22, 1 through 14, as you guys know, the basic story is that a king invites a bunch of people to his son's wedding feast, and the people don't come. They decide to do other things like go back to their own farms, go back to their business, which is pretty absurd. That's the first thing to notice. That's absurd. And he puts it into really understandable terms when he says, this would be like the president of the United States saying, hey, come to my house for a party. And you saying, no, no I've got some homework. You would do anything um, to arrange your life around going to this big event that you've been you know, cordially invited to. And so that's the first strange thing. He then invites new people. They not only don't come, they torture and then kill the messenger. Totally absurd. Then lastly, he says, none of these people were fit for coming to the wedding feast. Therefore, I'm going to invite all these people on the streets. They're going to come in. And the, the parable ends in a very strange way with the man who is not wearing the proper clothing, who gets thrown out, bound hand and foot and thrown out into the street. Okay, so let's talk about what this is really getting at. So the parable is alluding to two major things. And remember, don't literalize the parable, like Bishop Barron says, saying that the king is definitely just God and that God is, um, you know, this angry kind of crazy God. That's not really what it's trying to say. It's doing what Flannery O'Connor does, where it uses extreme examples to allude to these, um, you know, these concepts that are kind of woven into the story. Um, we're not going to watch this. We've already seen that. So you watched that yesterday. Okay. And so the first thing that the parable alludes to is salvation history. So God, who um, is going to stand in for the king, not in a literal way, but in a couple symbolic ways, um, is going to send prophets to the people. If you've read anything from the Old Testament, you've you know heard about a bunch of those prophets, Elijah, Ezekiel, um, you could name, you know, a bunch of prophets that God is sending to the people in order to bring a message. And so God, the king, sends a messenger or a prophet, and then that prophet, like many of the prophets in the Bible, are killed by the people for their message because the people don't want to hear the truth. Okay, so Jeremiah is one of them. Jesus, as we know, is a prophet, the greatest prophet, sent to, uh, to the people from God himself, and we kill Jesus. It's very much like the parable. We take him, and he speaks the truth to us, and we don't like it. And so Jesus ends up dying for that. Okay, so besides salvation history— Remember we said these parables are um, are all indicative of the quote-unquote last thing. So death, judgment, heaven, and hell, all the parables we're going to talk about from now to the end of the year are like that. We're going to end the year with these appropriately um, because they're about the last things, right? Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. And so the second thing that this parable is getting at is um, the concept of what heaven is all about. Okay, so the wedding feast is supposed to be very much like heaven. We're all invited to heaven. So God, the king, sends out his messenger, remember a prophet like Jesus, um, to invite everyone to the wedding feast. And what do we often do but turn him down? So if you thought it was absurd in the parable that so many people were rejecting the king's offer to come to this really fancy party, well, you should think about all the ways that God through Jesus, invites us into a life of holiness, and we basically tell him the same thing, that we're too busy, we have other plans, sorry, Jesus, not right now. And then you can kind of see that maybe the parable is not so absurd, but we actually do the same thing all the time in our own lives. So if if the wedding feast is heaven, and we're all invited, 
um, we have free will whether or not to take Jesus up on this offer. You know, when the when the prophet, when Jesus comes and says, God is inviting you to this great feast, we have free will to say, yes, I'd like to come, or no, I've got better things to do, which are obviously not better, but in our own mind, sometimes we prefer our own way to God's. And God does not force us. And we talked about this earlier this year. Um, for us to be truly human, and for us to be able to truly love God how He deserves to be loved, He has to give us free will. We have to be able to reject Him for the love to be real. Because if we were just little robots who knew nothing but to love and not had no choice not to love, would it really be love? No. Okay? So we all have free will. We don't have to accept the invitation. And oftentimes, we don't. Okay? And so... We have a couple other things that are being alluded to. Obviously, the son's wedding it is that we're being invited to is Jesus Jesus coming to earth. And then the wedding garment, as we see in Revelation 19, um, hold on, let me just pause really quick. I'm going to go grab my Bible for you. Um, it's going to be an important part as well. So just give me one second to grab my Bible. Okay, I think I'm back. I've got my Bible. So I'm going to scoot back to our notes. Click play. Okay, and so blah, blah, blah. We've seen all this. So the very last thing to talk about in this parable is what that weird wedding garment represents. So if we go to Revelation and then we go to chapter 19, verse 7 through 9, it says this. Then the angel said to me, write this. Oh, hold on one second. Seven through nine. Okay, sorry. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding day of the lamb has come. His bride has made herself ready. She was allowed to wear a bright, clean linen garment. The linen represents the righteous deeds of the holy ones. Okay, so the wedding garment. Hope you can see that. Righteous deeds and good works. So when we're invited to this wedding feast, when we're invited to come into the kingdom of heaven, um, the righteous deeds that we do are our reception of the invitation. What that means is like, if God is inviting us, I'm going to come like this so you can see it. If God is inviting us to heaven and says, I want you to live a holy life, I want you to be with me forever in heaven, then we can't say yes to that but then not change our lives for the better. We can't keep doing all of those things that we were doing that were distracting us from God, that were you know, getting in the way of our holiness. We have to, if we're going to say yes, we have to really and truly mean it. We have to change our lives to show that we've said yes. So if you're going to live a truly Christian life, then you have to make sure your actions um, reflect that because you don't want to be you know, a hypocrite. You don't want to say, oh, I believe all of these things, but then your life doesn't show that. Your life, you know, might contradict the fact that you've said yes to this invitation. So this is like the man in the parable who comes to the wedding feast. He says yes to living a life with God, but then his clothes are a symbol for the fact that he didn't change his life to reflect him saying yes. He said yes to God, but then he kept doing all of the same old things he was doing before, which is not what our lives are supposed to be to be about. Our lives are supposed to reflect the fact that we are striving for holiness. Even if we fail, we're still attempting to accept this invitation and then live our lives in a way that reflects that, to live holy lives. Okay, so that's as much notes as we're going to do today. I'm going to come back over here. Um, and so today's assignment, very, very short. I'm going to post it on Blackboard right now. You're going to do a tiny, tiny pop quote unquote pop quiz. I'm telling you about it right now, so it's not really a pop quiz, but it's just going to be a three question quiz to make sure that you took notes today and that you listened to this video. Um, it'll be due tomorrow, which is Friday at four o'clock. That'll be the rest of what we're doing this week. I'm not going to assign you a parable to write until next week. I didn't realize we had a couple things before that that needed to happen. So don't worry about that right now. I need to change the week at a glance because I've switched it up just a little bit. But today, your video, um, make sure that you have done your discussion board question for yesterday by four o'clock today. Today you're just watching this video and doing the little pop quiz. It's due tomorrow at four. I think that's it. If you've got any questions, send me a message and I hope you'll have a wonderful Thursday. You're keeping up with your work and know that I'm praying for you. I'll see you guys pretty soon. Bye.